if I could reverse time and take this back, I would. I spent a lot of time telling people all about why I wasn't drinking and people are not interested in you. We like to think other people are interested in us, but everybody is yeah. entirely self-interested. Right, right, and the minute right, right. you start yeah. going, oh, actually, what I decided was I was just going to reevaluate my life a little bit. And I came to the conclusion that alcohol didn't wasn't really fitting in with who I wanted to be. And then, 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 then. Whilst they're sipping on that, on that gin and tonic, they yeah. really not yeah. want to hear about your good life decisions. I know, and, that's not the moment. And it is an ugly, ugly thing holding a mirror up to somebody who does does not want to look in that mirror don't don't do it you, I did it not realizing I was doing it I did it because somebody had asked me the question why I was doing so I was telling them Today with my guest, Sarah Williamson, on the Tour for Dear Shit podcast. I'm your host, Angie Sorensen. Listen, as per usual, if you like this show, if you like the episode, if it speaks to you, I definitely want to hear from you. Like, you can always message me, you can DM me, you can email me, you can reach me on the website. I leave all the links in the show notes. And, you know, as per usual... Don't forget to share this podcast with a friend. You can take a screenshot when you listen to the episode on your on your phone. You can send it to your friend on social media or via text messages, email, whichever way you communicate with them, share it with them. And also, like, you know, if you give it like a five-star rating and a little review, I would so appreciate it. I really, really appreciate it. It really helps me so much to get this podcast in front of more ears. And it really helps me to grow and to keep doing this, you know, every single time. So this is, I really, really appreciate it. This has really helped me every time you've shared it with someone, every time you've rated it, every time you've left a review, it has helped me because the platforms that you listen on and you do this on, put this in front of more people, in front of more ears. And that helps me grow. And this is why, like, thanks to you, I've been, you know, this podcast has been on the charts in more and more countries. Like, it's insane. I got, like, another notification that I think it was South Africa. Like, it just keeps, like, is this in places? Like, I'm like, what? Like, wow. You know what I mean? And that's thanks to you because you share it. And the more you do this, the more you rate and review it, all of that stuff, it helps me just get in front of more people. And so I highly, really, highly appreciate you for that. So... On to today's episode. Today's episode is with Sarah Williamson. So Sarah actually took my podcasting workshop um, at the beginning of last year in 2021. And she now has a podcast called Drink Less, Live Better. Now, this episode is not about that. What we're going to talk today about is because I really like what she does and her energy about it, around it. And so she's all about helping people reducing alcohol intake or remove it completely. So how do you reduce or remove alcohol from your life? If you're known as a party girl or the party dude, or if you just used to have a drink after work as a ritual to cut out the work day. You know, we've all been there. I've definitely been there and I share this on the episode as well about how, you know, especially because I live alone and when we've been in lockdowns or, you know, when I've been, whether I've been studying from home, working from home or out of work from home, okay? Like, I needed something that told me, that gave me permission that now I am not in work mode. Now I am sipping a glass of wine and it's me time and it's time off and now I can do whatever I want. And it can quickly, it quickly spiral out of control, you know, like you just do it like, oh, every once in a while, one glass of wine, all of a sudden it's two glasses of wine and then the next thing you know, you wake, like, you know, in the morning, you're not so fresh anymore. And so Sarah's been there done that and now what she does is she helps others do the same uh as you know because now she's she's living an alcohol-free life and so she's helping others do the same without shame or guilt and she shares her thoughts on the national alcohol guidelines the not needing to hit rock bottom to make a change and also like what on earth do you order at the bar when it's not alcohol like what are the options like how do you get around it because let's face it I'm not as thirsty when it's not wine, okay? Like, I'm not out here trying to, like, gobble down liters of still water. Like, it's not happening, okay? 
So also like the social part of like when you're not drinking, she also shares, you know, like how and why you don't need to justify your choices to anyone. Like if you decided to stop drinking, that's it. You don't have to come up with that long story. And we go into details about that. And um, yeah, so I really, really want you to listen to this episode. I really love Sarah. I think she's amazing. She has such an amazing energy. She is just a natural person like who will lift you up. Um, she has definitely helped me for me, for things for me, uh, in just lifting me up, like, she's just got, like, this, she's got this great energy, and so I really want to share that with you today, um, that energy, you know, I said that as if, like, it's a thing, but, like, I, w- <laughs> I want to share her with you today, if, if I, if I may do so, so, listen, without further ado, help me give a big, warm welcome to Sarah. Let's begin. Well, welcome, Sarah. Hi, hello, lovely to see you today. Well, it's really great to, uh, to you know, to see you too. It was really lovely to just have like a quick catch up as well. Um, you know, we met, uh, we met last year. So I'm really excited to have you on the podcast today and talk about how you, Sarah, how you help women reduce or remove alcohol from their lives. And what I really like about you is that you don't necessarily talk about those who are suffering from alcoholism, but... Is really you talk you talk to to women who want to reduce their alcohol consumption. So they may not even be drinking every day, but they want to reduce it or remove it. But they still want to have a good time, right? Because sometimes that's the worry. We're like, oh, we're gonna have a good time. We're gonna be boring. Yeah. What are we gonna do with our hands? <laughs> but you know, so it's like, where do they go from here? Especially in a culture uh, with both of us, we live uh, in England, and you know, um, drinking, you know, it's it's part of uh, it's really normal. You know, there's nothing. It's part of it, and it's fun. So. So yeah, so that that's what you're doing. I want to really dive into this today. So before we do that, Sarah, please introduce yourself, where you live and what you do. Yeah, yeah, I'm Sarah um, and my business is Drink Less, Live Better. Um, I live in Surrey. Um, I'm not far outside of London. I don't have a really snappy job title, I suppose. Um, some people would refer to what I do as being a sober coach. Um, some people would call it recovery coaching um other people would call it guide on the side um you could give it actually any number of different job titles i don't have an official job title that i give myself um but definitely what i do is shine a light for other people i coach and i collaborate and it is all in the drink less or alcohol free sphere so what what got you into this um really um nobody is more surprised than me to find this as my line of work right now um i was a drinker for many many years not not also always what i would call a troublesome drinker and certainly not what i ever would have liked to have referred to myself or have anybody else refer to me as an alcoholic um if the label suits you and you like the label and you're comfortable and it gives you power and you're happy with that then that's fine we should all use the labels that feel good to us but i found myself in a position um sort of during my late 30s and then into my 40s where I knew that my relationship with alcohol was no longer doing me any favours. And I had a feeling of being uncomfortable about it, but also not being able to contemplate an alternative. Um, I'd spent a long time knowing that things, that I wanted things to be different in my life as far as alcohol was concerned, but being stuck about making any choices... Um, I certainly have had huge long periods in my life of being a binge drinker, not necessarily of always drinking every night of the week, not pouring vodka on my cornflakes, but having <laughs> the having the big nights out with the girls yeah. where I was never going to be the person who drank two glasses of wine. That was never going to be my style. Um, and so it was always those mornings after with the crushing... Oh, day of doom hangovers, those hideous cold sweats. My party trick on those nights was to walk in the front door. I generally wouldn't have been able to 
find my keys so I'd have got the you know spare keys from out in the garden I'd have come in the front door my shoes would generally have been at the front door and then my jeans would be in the kitchen my party top would be halfway up the stairs my bra would be in the bathroom my knickers would be on the landing you know there there was always the physical trail of destruction yeah. behind me as well yeah, as of course yeah. Uh, yeah. um and so I came to this point where um clearly those mornings after I would always say never again but that was a point of hilarity, you know, because it would be again, you know, and yeah. the hilarious chat the morning after on WhatsApp and the crushing hangover had to be, you know, got through. Um, but there was such a lot of time where I was actually drinking under the government guidelines, the UK government mm-hmm. guidelines for women, say 14 units a week. I wasn't always drinking 14 units a week so I spent a long time um excusing myself that there wasn't a problem because I didn't fit the um I suppose average criteria for a person with a problem with a drink I was just mm, under the guidelines on some weeks and over them by a big binge on the the big nights out with the girls um and so rather than um thinking uh, I I did do that thing I did do that doom scrolling you know late at night you know where's my nearest AA meeting I, I was looking for a definition of an alcoholic I wanted somebody to say to me right um an alcoholic is somebody who leaves their knickers on the landing or, you know, wh- whatever, <laughs> whatever the description was. What's Some the medical Some people don't need alcohol just to leave them on <laughs> yeah. the landing. Some people yeah. just will leave them, you know, scattered around because, you know, they're just, you know, scattered. Of course, because yeah, yeah. we're normal. Yeah. Um, and and I got I got cross that there wasn't a, you know, if you fulfil X, Y, Z, then equals what whatever I, 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 I felt like... Perhaps I did need a label, but alcoholic was not the label Mm -hmm. that I was looking for, for sure. Um, And so there came a point where I had just had enough. And that is when when things changed. Okay, so I'm just stepping out of the episode for a minute. If you like what I'm doing and you want to have your own podcast too, I actually teach this stuff and I absolutely love doing it because podcasting has been such an incredible experience for me my favorite parts have been being able to just be myself connecting with fascinating guests from all walks of life connecting with you as well you know engaging with you it has been really an amazing experience and so I am beyond excited to be able to help you create your own mark in the world through podcasting by showing you how to do it So to get the details on how to sign up, just go to learnpodcasting.online. I will add the link in the show notes and I really hope to see you there. So now back onto the episode. Yeah. Yeah, And also I think, you know, we don't always have to be on the spot. On the, on, on the other end of the spectrum to want to be doing something about it right? or to actually be in a place that's not healthy for us anymore. And I quite, I like that you said about the, you know, I think it's, is it 14 units, whatever the guidelines is in the UK. And I think those guidelines were very probably from country to country for sure. But also one glass of wine for one person may completely feel like poison to their body and someone else can have two bottles and they're like "Mm, maybe i should go home you know so it's very different from people to people um absolutely yeah i think even the definition of alcoholic is everyone looks at it very different i mean i think things are starting to maybe even out between the us and the uk but i remember there was years ago where you know a monday night a regular monday night in london would be really like looked down upon from you know a lot of americans for example america, like when i would watch you know programs i'm not saying that's how it is in america but years ago remember it was just like i would hear sometimes uh, on shows where they'd be like oh let's do an intervention right they'll do an intervention yeah. in the u.s and i'm like that's a wednesday night over here i'm pretty yeah. sure like i'm not sure what's going on so that doesn't mean that 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 me thinking that was okay right like i'm just saying like again it's like i think if we just go based on the guidelines of the country we're in yeah. we're probably going to get into a lot of trouble because absolutely. what's right for you is not going to be right for me absolutely 
Um, well, I was just going to say that whole thing of um, other people's perceptions and whether that is a piece of paper that says 14 units yeah. or whether it is your good friend who relentlessly says to you, but you haven't got a problem with alcohol. Why are you worried about it? You know, that that whether it's whether it's the media, uh, I'm not suggesting we blame the media for everything, but that that constant narrative, you know, this yeah. time of year, we're, we're talking right now in December, you you know the beautiful adverts in the newspapers and the magazines for every alcoholic drink those pictures of parties where it is always somebody with their first glass of champagne or their yeah. gin and tonic and the lovely lighting and the twinkly twinkly and the christmas tree and the da 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 all of those photos are the photos and the little movie scenes at the beginning of the night out nobody is seeing the scene of devastation no. nobody's advertising their alcohol by going and this is what it looks like at midnight or this is what it looks like the morning after <laughs> there was one campaign a few years ago there was only one it was he was not an alcoholic i don't think it was an alcohol brand but i can't remember who did this it was about especially like safety for women you'd see right. them at the beginning of the night you see them getting, it looked like there was the beginning of the night and they're looking in the mirror, but then they have like vomit stain, yeah. they have lipstick over yeah. here. And, and there was another one with safety about getting into a random car, which is you know, the, yeah. the, the mini cabs in London, you know, if you don't always yeah. know who they are and like, you know, the danger we put ourselves in. And yeah, that part is yeah. not glamorous. That part is not fun. I mean, definitely yeah. like, you know, having your girlfriend holding your hair when you're like down the toilet uh, is not yeah. a good look. But we say at my age, we, we don't hold each other's hair. We just go and-, and you, you just know, get on with it. You yeah. just get on with it. And you, <laughs> you, hope, you hope that no one's seen it. But yeah, I think, I think, yeah, it is, it is true is that, like you said something, um, before we move on, I want to sort of like sit with you um, on something is that you mentioned about you know, you were not the person who just go and have like two glasses, two drinks, two glasses of wine or something. And I, I realized, and I don't know, it, I don't, I don't think it has to do with us having been in, in lockdowns for like two years, you know, on and off and stuff. But um, is the, you know, and obviously I always think about Australia, so it's like a parenthesis, but they've been in serious lockdown, like nonstop. Like we've been lucky over here. It's been, you know, in terms of compared to them. But I think I'd been. I've been now out probably twice, <laughs> just the last yeah. couple of like whatever you know, like whenever it was like open and stuff, like really not that long ago. And the first time I went out, I was like, I've put my alarm clock on my phone for like ten thirty eleven because it was down in Brixton, so it's the other side for me, right? So mm -hmm. I have to get the tube home, or it would have to be a cab, like you know, if it's yeah. after that. Uh, and it's really fast. So I put my alarm clock. I was out with people I hadn't seen in two years. Okay. Um, I'm having a grand old time. I'm looking healthy also because I haven't been drinking. So I'm yeah. out, I'm great, feeling good, loving myself. It's all good, having a great time. And then my alarm buzzes and I'm yeah. like, yeah, because what happened? I'd already had a couple of drinks. Of and then I'm yeah. like, guess what? I took the first train home. I yeah. didn't take the yeah. last train. Yeah. And, yeah. Then, and then another one recently, I was like, again, I was like, I'm definitely only having one drink. I'm definitely just one. Uh, I don't even know if I'm going to drink. I'm out with beautiful people we're having a great time great conversation it wasn't a party party night it was literally we sat down food drinks again my alarm buzzes i'm ignoring it what happens i'm in a cab at 3 a.m yeah, yeah on my yeah, way yeah. home and it's like and i was like i i was at first i was like is it because i've been restrained for so long like not been out i'm like do i need but then i'm like no, it's kind of is a bit what I'm like. Anyway, because it's like, I'm mad. I'm like, I'm having a great time. Let's keep partying. And it's like, yeah. And it's it's only one of those was worth it to yeah. actually stay out. Um, the other one was like, the next day I was like, oh, really yeah. not, not worth it. And it's just, it, it is the alcohol. And it's just, it stops that, that you don't think straight. So yeah. so you've mentioned about your relationship to alcohol before before this. And so I wonder if, was there like a pivotal moment that made you that's it or was it gradually that you sort of quit alcohol it was a gradual realization and something that i would really really love people to know is that there is no pivotal moment required there is no rock bottom required yeah. um and i think a lot of what people do is they carry on drinking because they're waiting for the the day of reckoning they're they're not necessarily waiting for the intervention but they're waiting for something drastic for somebody to suggest to them look 
perhaps you need rehab, perhaps you need to go to AA, perhaps what what is the answer? We need to find the answer for you. So they're waiting for either somebody external to say or do something to start to help them with what's going on, or they're doing something in their life that is going to result in the massive dumpster fire burn it all everything's gone to shit I completely whether it's their work life their personal life whatever it is that they are constantly lighting a match under that is fueled by alcohol sending like a really angry email company company wide or you know like yes (laughs) yes or or even you know the mortifying text to ex-boyfriends or or a friend that you had unfinished business with or whatever the thing is So you're you're waiting for this this thing, this moment to occur so that you then have the moment to look back on and go, oh, yes, that was the time in which I decided I was going to stop or things were going to be different. My relationship with alcohol was going to change. Forget all of that. That is a complete crock. All you are doing is lining yourself up to carry on in the way that you were behaving and and to be waiting for worse. Well, it, it's a way of procrastinating, right? It, it really is. Mm-hmm. It really is. And there is a better way than that. There is a yeah. better way which requires no big firework and grand exit mm-hmm. on drinking. There is a quieter way to just close that book draw the line under that chapter and tuck it away somewhere where you don't have to keep thinking about it. Now, there's two schools of thought on that. Um, One, in the field in which I work, there are loads of fabulous and amazing coaches who work to the theme of going sober or alcohol-free forever. You know, the, the phase of my life before was drinking, and the phase of my life after is I'm no longer drinking and, and this is the new version going forward. And if that works for somebody and for those coaches and their lifestyle, then that is all good. Um, my take on it is slightly different. I had a really long period of moderating my drinking before I decided to stop drinking. Um, and that moderation thing is a l- little bit contentious for some people because If you are going to be honest and tell the truth about alcohol, which I do and I would, alcohol is a toxin. It is poisonous for your body. There is no nutrition in it. Do do not ever come at me with that bullshit about, you know, a glass of red wine a day is full of antioxidants because it is utter bullshit, you know, used as marketing by the the alcohol companies. Alcohol makes us dumb, fat, and what's the other one? I know you're supposed to say fat, but you know what I mean? Like, it's like, it used to be one of the things you said, like, dumb, fat, and there was something else. It totally disrupts your sleep. Even just one glass dehydrates you. Dehydrates, I know. The whole thing in the morning is like, Oh. Yeah, there's nothing good about it. Mm-hmm. But but if there is what I would refer to as, as a harm reduction route, if there is an option, if you are the person who was drinking two bottles of wine every night and you're going to make a conscious decision that from now on you're going to drink two G&Ts at the weekend or, yeah, or whatever, yeah. Yeah. then you are doing yourself a massive favour than where you were before yeah and and who knows where you end end up afterwards yeah Yeah. and and so for me it was a journey of choosing at some point I'm not going to drink like I was drinking before and I did become the person who went on a night out and drank two glasses of wine oh my god and I was successful at it for a long period of time I completely changed my narrative about who I was when I drank how I drank what I drank and really it was a revelation because I became somebody totally different in my drinking habits and it worked really, really well for me until I didn't want to do that anymore. So it was nothing about a rock bottom. It was nothing about a spectacular fall from grace in a gutter, anything like that. It was a series of realisations over a long time. It was a successful route through harm reduction of drinking less. And then came a day where I said, actually, I'm not going to play that game anymore. I I decided that I was going to do an experiment and have a year alcohol free. And And I had decided that that experiment was going to be 2020. So this was 2019, I was thinking about it. I decided I'd start 
on the first of, this was kind of October, November time, I was making my plan, right, first of January, it's going to look like this. And I was kind of getting straight in my head how I was going to achieve it. And I kind of accepted that I was clearly going to be boring, I was going to be miserable, I was going to have no friends for a year, all yeah, of that, yeah. made peace with it. And then in December, I thought to myself, why am I waiting till the 1st of January? No good ever came of a New Year's resolution for me. How long has that ever been? That's never been successful in my life with anything. So I'm not going to wait. I'm just going to start. And so I started that December 2019. I had a night out, which ordinarily would have been a massive night out with oldest friends. And on that night, I drank two G&Ts. Everyone else thought I was drinking my usual amount but I just secretly uh, yeah. I made myself the bar person and each time I was topping up my g and I actually just put mostly tonic in it so I did I had two gins and I woke up the next morning and I didn't have a hangover but I knew that was my last drink yeah. for a year that I was going to start my alcohol-free experiment early so it didn't require any enormous hangover, any never again, any, yeah. you know, chat about the night before or whatever. It was just quietly done. But I like that because I think there are many routes to, to the same destination, right? Yeah. So I think, like, for me, because I have done when I was younger, like, you know, do a year without alcohol and things like that. Like, the first time, I think it's like, oh, gosh, I don't know. It must have been, like, 15, 16 years ago I did that. And people were like, oh, my God, a year. And I was like, and I remember... A lot of it was like one of the hardest part, which I, I know we're going to circle back to it a bit later, but the hardest part was like, especially when I'd be out. And at the time, people were like, I'm not ordering, I remember this friend, she's like, I'm not ordering you a Coke, Angela. I'm not ordering, this is embarrassing. I can't go that at the bar. I was like, oh my God. I was like, I'll, cut off. I'll, I'll get it. She was like, no, that's fine. I don't order. You know? And on dates as well, they were like, you know, and they were like, oh, let's have a drink. And, and I remember the only thing that people would not give me clap back on, you know, I don't know if that's the expression in English, but where, you know, I'd say I would order at the time, you know, this was like, it was like, you know, 16 years ago, 15 years ago, you know, the alcohol free versions was like orange juice, Coke or cranberry juice. You know, it was very boring and you cannot yeah. really drink that much of it anyway. Like all of a sudden you realize you're not that thirsty. Um, <laughs> so, um, and I remember on dates, like, it, or people who didn't know me, I was like, it was, it was really annoying. I felt like I always had to justify, like there was always like, oh, why, yes. why? And I remember yeah. one time as a joke, I went, yeah, I'm an alcoholic. And they went, oh, sorry, sorry. And I went, yeah. I'm joking. But is that the only reason why I should be having alcohol? Like, come on now. Like, that's the, that's the, that was the culture, right? So, yeah. uh, you know, and, and I was in London. So it's like party party city, right? Um, yeah. I was in my 20s or however, however old I was in. But yeah, so, um, but yeah, so I think, because for me, so the reason why I'm bringing this up is I think there are many different routes to it. And, and I do like a good time. I do like a drink and stuff like that. But I think like what's happened like lately, I have decided a few months, I think it must have been a few months already to stop drinking at home. And I have done this before and then I just didn't keep up with it. But especially, you know, with lockdowns and this and that, like, you know, it was really easy to just have like one drink, especially when I work a lot or if I was, or in times when I've been studying and it's like, you need like this. And if I'm at home all the time, I needed that, that six o'clock cutoff almost. Like otherwise yeah. I'd keep working till 3 a.m. Like, yes. oh, you know, I get like really intense. Yeah. Um, But I, for me, the reason this time was a bit different than usual. For me, it was just like, I think it's like, it was really sort of like a personal, I feel like, I feel like in these times is that I feel like I need to be more in touch with myself and be more alert and having a clear mind. And I'm really enjoying, I'm going to sound so boring now, but I'm really enjoying, like, I'm trying to do like, you know, I do like meditations and different things that sort of require you to have like a clear mind. Um, yeah. And I'm, and I'm interested in different kinds of things now. And I'm realizing actually, I feel a lot better. I'm getting a better high, if you like, on life yes. by actually being so and experiencing everything in a different way. And I'm also so much more productive in the morning. I get up early, but I actually get out of bed, right? Yes. I mean, I've definitely, you know, I've been quite open about this on, on the on the podcast, so I don't have an issue saying it here. But like, you know, I have had depression, anxiety, and things like that. So alcohol is something that is kind of a weird partner in that as well. And I... I'm aware about, you know, for me being healthy is because I want to, you know, when I work out, it's because I want to keep my mind clear. So I think, and that all of this is like, it doesn't mean that when you don't drink alcohol that you can't get depressed, obviously not. But it's just like, 
it's all part of it and it's sort of like it's like this feel like i just want to sort of like reach a different level now for myself i am 43 I may have more years behind me than in front of me. Like, I feel like there's things I need to be, I want to be doing and I want to experience differently, you know? Yeah, definitely. So I think, like you said, it doesn't have to be a rock button. There's a rock button. There's not. And I don't think as well, like saying you're never going to drink again. So I think for me, that's how I quit smoking cigarettes. I stopped because it took me several, several times. But the last time when I quit, it was like, well, I may, I may still smoke. Yes. I'm just yeah. not smoking today. Yes. I for the foreseeable future. And I think it's Definitely. that thing. It's like the thing with the diets, right? If you're going to diet yeah. right out for January, you're going to put all the weight back on if, or probably more of because course. it's that restriction yeah. thing. And for some of us, yeah. for some of us, that restriction doesn't really work really well. And moderation is difficult too. But it's like, for yeah. me, it's that, well, yeah, I still, if I want to have a glass of red wine when I'm out for dinner, I will. But, yeah. I, but definitely removing it at home, drinking alone. Yes. Is is a big it's like it, it's I feel a good the big step difference. in the right direction yeah yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. and exactly all of that stuff that you were saying about you know wanting the clear head for meditation knowing that you're sleeping much better here's the thing we get to a certain age and we start looking at the things that other people around us are doing that are doing them favors and we see someone over there is drinking green smoothies and that person can tell you exactly the right supplements to take somebody is doing yoga, somebody is going for a run, meditating, you start adding in all of these different things, and they take up time and energy. And let's hope they make you feel better, yeah. either physically, um, or spiritually, or um, sorry, mind, body or soul in yeah. all three areas of your life. But here's the deal. If you instead of adding all of the things in, just take one thing out remove one thing what is the point in doing all of those good things for yourself if you are then necking a bottle of poison at the end of yeah. the day yeah, there's yeah, yeah. there's nothing about it that makes any sense and for sure that thing about wanting some definition definition in your day and doing the activities that feel like um relaxing or, or whatever it is the the emotion the thought the feeling in that moment that needs scratching having a selection of um, alternatives that are quickly available to your brain as go-tos instead of the fridge door is key and certainly to know that you you know uh, we could list out a whole bunch of things that might suit you that might be have a nice bath instead go for a walk instead um, you know a whole big do your meditation do a bit of yoga da 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 but before you choose that alternative activity to just get really clear in your mind what itch it is that needs scratching first so at the end of this day what do I need do I actually need connection with somebody who loves me if it is that don't choose go for a walk because all that will happen instead of drinking a glass of wine you will then come back and you've walked 5,000 steps but the emotion the thing is still yeah, there yeah. if I used to be really uncomfortable with the feeling of loneliness and isolation. You can live in a house full of people oh. and still feel a disconnect, loneliness, whatever it is. And so it was of no help to me whatsoever to go for a walk or get, get in the bath. That wasn't giving me what I wanted. What I needed to do was call my best friend. And so making the right connection between yeah. what the feeling is, how you want to feel instead, and of course, what I used to do was use a drink as the shortcut for everything. Yeah. Just numbing out slightly, just taking the edge off. It's a great number. I mean, you know, I, I think we've all done things, you know, I mean, I have been, I, I think for me it was like, I, I can't remember, it was like it was during one of the lockdowns and it was winter and I was really in a bad, bad place. And I was trying to get myself out of it, but I was still drinking at, you know, drinking at home. I always had a bottle of wine in the fridge and, you know, ready yeah. to be open. And I remember one time I went to this, like I had, it was this online thing, webinar, a friend was doing, and then there was a um, meditation, but I was in such a bad, restless place, if you know what I mean. It was really hard for me to just sit down and take it in and listen in. Yeah. Um, but I wanted, it was good to have the company. Right. I know yeah. it sounds really, really sobby, but, you know, it was lockdown. A lot of us who live by ourselves can feel, understand what that, that feels like. And it's true. You could be in a house full of people and feel alone. And that's I think, feels even more lonely because you're like, I yeah. shouldn't feel this way. Right. Yeah. But I was there. And literally, do you know what I did? I had like this mug 
pretending I was drinking tea. I had wine in yeah. there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then yeah. every time the meditation go off, I'll take off my video and go off and just like, you know, because I that's couldn't a... even bear to sit still. And I think that's the key thing that you said. It's like, what is that thing that needs itching? Yeah. Right. And then once I, you know, and then once I figure out what's going on, I got myself some help. I got myself out of it. And that's also part of like stopping drinking and all of this stuff. And even though I am definitely not an alcoholic, I mean, I used to drink way more when I was younger. But I think it's like it definitely is like it, even if it's just one glass or two glass a night, it does make a difference for me, for my kind of body. For someone else, it'd be fine. But for yeah. me, it's like it does actually have. Uh, an impact it, it served this purpose yeah. for that you know those yeah. those months but then i realized i didn't but it, something else had to happen if i just went i'm not drinking i yeah. would still feel I was like what do i do with all of this yes you know yeah. so i sort of yeah. needed to get myself in the right place right environment you know yes. getting some help and then i was just like yeah now i can let go of that crutch yes yeah. you know yes um yeah. but yeah so so you know maybe it's a, it's a bit of a random question but how do you define your current drinking status i don't know if that's the word i don't know what to call it like how do you call yourself like it's interesting um so i i choose i in a conversation like this i would say that i'm alcohol free i prefer alcohol free over sober it's a personal choice Mm -hmm. um for me the word sober just doesn't feel i I think i've too closely connected sober it's quite loaded perhaps aa it's quite yeah it's a very loaded word yeah. yeah and it feels like to me if I declare myself as sober it feels to me as if it might be a bit boring a bit dull a lifestyle choice made out of desperation Mm -hmm. um so I would choose alcohol free (laughs) for a description like that but actually if I'm in a pub and being offered a drink I, I wouldn't give myself any description at all I wouldn't justify my choice of ginger beer or lime and soda or whatever it might be in the pub um but with friends I'm more likely to say you know I'm not drinking at the moment um rather than sober or alcohol free yeah 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 I don't think it's something that you need to be like advertising either it's not like it's not like a justification I was just curious in terms of like yeah how you because yeah I don't think it's like yeah there's there's so many different terminology like I don't drink sober you know alcohol free like you said um but I think yeah like you mentioned ginger beer I've I've drunk a lot of ginger beers too um in my life that's a great alternative is that what other alternative would you say because often often I find that unless you go to something like a bit bit more um upper um I don't know what to call it like a nicer bar that have like mocktails but often they can be very sweet because it's like it's just loads of like sugar in it like what are alternatives that when you go when you go to a, a regular bar that doesn't serve necessarily alcohol free stuff like what do you normally yeah I, I tend to drink a tonic because lots of pubs now do their fancy tonics because of the big explosion of gin um so I tend to drink a nice tonic and ask for it in a gin glass with ice and a slice and then it looks like you're drinking the same as everybody else. I love how you say with ice and a slice. I just, yeah, <laughs> I want it to. And, and if somebody brings me a tonic, if it's, you know, serves me a sonic, tonic in a water glass, I'm not shy about giving it back kindly yeah. and just saying, oh, could you just pour that into the gin glass instead, please? Because I don't want to be, I don't want to look like a kid. I don't no. want to look like I'm drinking blackcurrant squash. Yeah, right. um, That's not my choice. Yeah, um, yeah. So in a pub that might not be, ha- you know, yes, there's a time and a place for the mocktails and I love all of that. And certainly some of the pubs around me now are much better at stocking the alcohol-free gins. They're becoming a bit more mainstream now. So that's always more often than not a choice. Um, but in in a little country pub, my go-to is more likely to be a ginger beer. I do love a lime and soda, but I insist on it really limey. Don't give me a little dash of lime. I want a lot of lime and soda. I do like a lime and soda, but I like it with the fresh fresh limes. Yeah, fresh, fresh limes. Lime, yeah. And yeah. the great thing also is super cheap. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, it's some solid. places don't. I know. Some people don't even. Sh- some places don't even charge. I'm like, no, no, but that's yeah. my drink. You don't understand. Like, you need to. Yeah. Like, I've, now I'm like, yeah. now I feel like I'm like just a freeloader. Yeah. I'm like, no, no, yeah. you need to charge me something because that's like I'm yeah. really thirsty right now, and I, you know, I just want to twenty five p for a dash. Twenty five p, super. Yeah. yeah, I know. So, yeah. so that, that's great. Yeah, because I think that's the thing is like, what do you drink? Because cranberry juice, yeah. you know, it's. <laughs> Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, and, but... you know, and then water is like, oh yeah, but you know, you're yeah. out. So, but I like the yeah. thing that you said about the glass because um, it does. 
you know, even like, even actually when you make a green smoothie, what kind of glass do you put it in? You know, like yeah. I used to make like a whole thing about my green smoothie and putting something, a nice glass that made it fun. Um, yeah. Cause I do love green smoothie, although I don't, haven't made one in a while, but I think sometimes for me, presentation means a lot yeah. as well. Like yeah. I, I, yeah. I eat and drink visually too. Yes, so, of course. Yeah, um, yeah. So I think like the other bit I want to sort of talk about before we go into, you know, how you help your, your, your client. Well, actually, that is actually part of how you help your client, actually. Cause I know like we sort of like briefly touched on it earlier, but with how people react to you not drinking anymore. Because I think some mm. people sometimes almost take offense or are embarrassed to order you yeah. your soda uh, or yeah. whatever it is. And there's a whole thing. And I think sometimes that's a bit of that peer pressure. Yeah. Um and so I was wondering, like, you know, how have you noticed this for yourself and or for your client? And how mm. would you sort of advise to tackle those? Mm. Mm. Um, I would say that it changes over time in all different ways. Um, certainly the early days for me, um, I didn't mind about telling a white lie. Um, and I definitely did, took those opportunities to say either I was on antibiotics um, because that's a, always a reason, you know, a valid yeah. reason not to have yeah. a drink. Yeah, um, I got another UTI. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it stops people asking you what's everyone, wrong with you. Everyone, yeah. everyone knows the pain yeah. and nobody's going to like, yeah. you know. Nobody questions uh, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Question yeah. It. yeah, yeah. Unless you're a very um, good girl, but you be like, oh, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I, I would advocate telling the white lies. You know, I've, I've got a six o'clock spin class tomorrow morning that I'm going to, whether you have or not no yeah, one's checking up yeah. on you yeah. um choosing to be the driver um so and yeah. and with that i would provide the um cautionary note that offering to take other people to the venue is va fine if you're the driver but make sure you never offer anybody else a lift home because at that point at like 10 30 when everybody else is three or four drinks in and you are stone cold sober you've perhaps had a lovely time up until that moment but then the stories start getting told for the second or third time and you would just like to be in bed, which does not make you boring or dull. You can just hop in your car and leave. That's um, a good one. That's a good so one. to, you know, to, to give yourself whatever exit strategy feels good, to never have to feel like you need to explain yourself. I did, uh, uh, if I could reverse time and take this back, I would. I spent a lot of time telling people all about why I wasn't drinking and people are not interested in you. We like to think other people are interested in us, but everybody is yeah. entirely self-interested. Right, right, and the minute right, right. you start yeah. going, oh, actually, what I decided was I was just going to reevaluate my life a little bit. And I came to the conclusion that alcohol didn't wasn't really fitting in with who I wanted to be. And then, and then, and then, and then, and then, sipping on that, on that gin and tonic, they yeah. really not want to hear about your good life decisions. I know, and that's not the and moment. It is an ugly, ugly thing holding a mirror up to somebody who does not want to look in that mirror don't don't do it you, I did it not realizing I was doing it I did it because somebody had asked me the question why I was doing so I was telling them and there is a time and a place for the truth and that is not it in the pub and even let's say if someone asks you and if you're not wanting to say because sometimes also there could be you may not be ready to talk about it because yeah. also sometimes when you I feel like when we talk about things so whether it's like you want to you, you want to quit drinking or you want to reduce it or you want to start a new business or whatever it is when there's something a new point you may not yet completely embody that decision and people pick up on that and yes. when they react to you is if they are not if, if they're not giving you a reaction that will feel supportive for you it may be because you're not completely embodying embodied in that and that may put you of course at, you know yes. and all of a sudden you're like yeah okay maybe i'll just have like one drink yeah yeah, yeah. i yeah. mean you know whatever i can start yes. my new i can start my resolution you know next year or whatever yes. and, and i think it's um sometimes it's not because you want to be secretive sometimes people may ask questions they may not even want the answer to but sometimes people ask questions and you not you you don't need to feed their curiosity for one and it may not suit their agenda however it's what's best for you yeah and yeah. at that point especially when you're transitioning into a new place that i've had to learn this over I've, I've made that mistake many times over different areas of my life where all of a sudden i'm like yeah. explaining shit and then like yeah and i'm not really confident and it's icky it's icky for me yes. it's icky for them and it's like sometimes i'm like 
just stop talking. Yeah, just stop talking. <laughs> and I think yeah. once you've embodied that decision and you're clear, the more yeah. you're clear about it, the less you need to say about it because you yes. don't need anybody's opinion or approval yes. or disapproval. No. You don't need the exactly. drama or the, yeah. yeah. And I think it's like, yeah, no, I'm just not drinking. I just prefer it this way. And, and that's exactly what I say to my clients in the early days. Just keep it so short. Go, go with you know, something that feels good for you to say that can trip off the tongue really easily. And, you know, I'm doing an exercise class at six o'clock in the morning and turn around and start talking about something else or to some, you know, you owe nobody else. And I think to be very cautious about, um, you know, for me in the early days, I did everything exactly as I always had done. So I did go on all the big girls nights out and I didn't change the way I functioned in my friendship groups and it was fine. But what I started to do after a period of time was engineer um, different socialising activities. So instead of it being the Friday night in the pub thing, I would send a WhatsApp message and say, oh, I'm going to go for a walk on Sunday afternoon and stop for tea and cake on the way who wants to join me and actually over the last couple of years the way that we socialize as a group has changed and and I don't credit myself with being the change maker but the way that it's changed feels better to me um, and to us as a as a group of friends as well I like how you transformed it that and then changed the dynamic because I think because I think sometimes for for a lot of us is that when if we like a drink and we go out and stuff like that, sometimes we realize when we don't have the alcohol in the equation, there's a lot of people we don't, we actually may find boring, we may not really align with, or we just don't really want to hang out with. And I think there are the pure party friends, right? Yeah. That don't necessarily yeah. transition to the, let's go for a walk and actually have a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I think sometimes I think that's, that may also be a struggle, a pressure, which again, that's something that uh, I think that comes back with things that you know with actually you know with addiction addictions like you know with drugs and stuff like if you were in a peer group you know um and there's all, all kinds of other areas as well i mean i know that's an issue with like you know with homelessness as well is that a part of it is that that's who you know your family your friends are also homeless and it's that's a di- it's i know I'm, I'm i'm talking about things that probably shouldn't be because i'm not an expert on it but it's just it's part of one of the struggle is that it's like who are you to elevate yourself to something better by leaving yeah. everyone else behind, right? And yeah. I think so. So that there, there, there are so many different components um, yeah. to this, and I think so. Maybe even though um, we think, oh, you know, it's just quote unquote alcohol. It's actually it's it's something that's it, it means different things for different people, and it can have a different impact to different people. Imagine if you are, you know, there may be someone who's listening, and their whole family drinks every day. Yes. And all of yes. a sudden, the one person not drinking, guess what? Yeah. It may not, it may be a supportive environment. They may go good on you or or they may be good on you like in a passive, you know, in a sarcastic way. But do you know what? They may be, some people will drag you back down. So I think sometimes you have to make those hard choices of sometimes you need to declutter your social yeah. to yeah. actually, so that you can actually then, you may be a bit alone for a while, but then you're going to start yes. attracting and like you're going to go to activities like going for a walk. There's those of meetup groups that go for walks. Yeah. I keep meaning to go to those, but yeah. So there are things that there's things you can do, right? So yeah. yeah. you may have already answered this um, in some way, but I want to sort of ask you this directly now. What has been or is the biggest payoff for you to quit drinking? Or to be alcohol free, let me put it this way, to be alcohol yeah. free. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's the time in my life that I've got back um the hours wasted drinking wasted and wasted you know the um when you think of it in raw hours it's a lot of time um so whether it was just Thursday and Friday nights on the sofa where that that moment in which I poured that G&T or that glass of wine and then the rest of the evening was I, I wasn't in any way incoherent or anything but it was just time that I stopped doing any other things um and then the nights out obviously started at the point at which you started getting ready for a night out and did not end until the hangover was over and done with so uh, yeah because you lose the next day if you really you lose the next if you, day if you really yeah. had quite a bit of and, drink. and the yeah. older you get you know the worse I hate to say it but you know the worse that that gets um so the wasted hours I think the payoff is 
bringing those hours back into my life as usable, useful. I'm not going to say I always use them productively, but I certainly use them better than I did use to do, along with the improved, uh, this is, yeah, the improved sleep, which brings with it, you know, that mental clarity and, and then the superficial things like the much more hydrated, nicer looking skin and hair, you know, those things matter. The way we look changes. I mean, I notice it in the mirror, in the picture. I'm like, oh my God, it's like, it's almost like yeah. there's this layer of alcohol mist yes. <laughs> under yes. your skin. And it's yeah. like, all of a sudden, like the face is more like just smoother and like the skin yeah. is better. I feel better. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I think yeah, this, that's the thing. I know it's a, it's a bit of a, maybe a tangent, but just like briefly wanted to mention this. I, I wonder how, because you know you have what the terminology functioning alcoholics. I mean, I, and yeah. I, I, I do know one person, yeah. um, very, very, very like a senior position in a, yeah. a firm that everybody knows the name of. So it's serious. Pedro many manages a team, a big team, yeah. serious alcoholic, yeah. but functioning. And yeah. you can smell it, you know, it's like, you know, it's that difference of like, yeah, I drink a lot to like, you can smell it on someone. Yeah. Right. It's like that rotten, it's a rotten liver almost like, you know, it's yeah. that, which is, you know, I, I say, I, I sound flippant, but it's not like it's serious. Um, yeah. And so, because, you know, you mentioned about the time, I'm sure, imagine how, how much more functioning that person would be without the yeah. alcohol, right? If they got, because obviously there's a lot effective. of things going on, there's something yeah. psychological going on and yeah. there's all kinds of things going on and I understand it's hard for that person. Yeah. So obviously without the alcohol, maybe it would be even worse. But like if it was without the alcohol and that person got proper help, that's what's so frustrating for me. It's like I can see the potential and I love you, but it's so hard to be around you because that's when it gets into the level of, you know, it's not everybody lies like children learn to like this it's part of evolution you know it, it, people who say i never lie you're lying because white yeah. lies and it, you know uh we don't yeah. want to want to upset people yeah. who want peace all that kind of stuff but that, there's a difference between that and then de- um deceiving people in mind it's manipulation and you can feel yeah. it i can feel it so i can't be around that person you know anymore because it's like you feel manipulated all the time so it yeah. comes it's, it's a big there's a there's a, a level where it is really really serious where it is like you need that really like a lot of support like clinical support yes. you name it but yeah, yeah i wonder how they function like as I'm, I'm i am like completely and i don't think that person does like cocaine and things because i know obviously sometimes that sort of counter yeah people do that but i don't know how i mean do you know that i mean i don't know yeah i mean i i think you know it is a sliding scale isn't it and yeah. at one end there is your friend and and worse. And at the other end is, you know, my granny who perhaps has one glass of sherry at Christmas and, and nothing the rest of the year. Now, that referred to in the middle is what I would call and what plenty of people call grey area drinking. That, that blob of space where for one person drink, you know, if you or I were to drink the amount that your friend drinks, we'd be wiped out. But your friend has built up this tolerance, you know, over time, this has probably been a long, long held thing in their lives. Making that change from that place is much more difficult than making a change from from a place way before. Yeah, and I think also, you know, this is like sort of, I guess, like a disclaimer in a way, but it's like, there is obviously, you know, what we are talking about today, um there is there is this sort of area which is quite broad yeah. of like yeah. the amount of drinking and how we drink and how our relationship to alcohol is yeah. but then there is the level of where it is where there's actually a, a molecular change in the body where you know it's it, i mean i'm sure i'm not you know i think a lot of people do recognize is that smell i don't know why i know that yeah. smell but it's a smell yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah. i think when that a person with that level of alcohol consumption stops that's when it actually becomes Life threatening to stop. Oh yes, cold and, turkey. You can go cold turkey like this because absolutely should never go cold turkey. Yeah. and when absolutely. it's at that level, yeah. I mean, you and I. I mean, me for me, I could go cold turkey. Like, no, I'm not gonna yeah. die. Yes, but and that I person, could. yeah, that person. I think that's why they they bring beers to when they are in you know when someone who's actually really seriously yes um, yes, yes they can't just yeah. go cold turkey they go like they no. go with a lager one a yeah lager you'll a have or seizures yeah yeah and so you know a medical residential rehab is yeah, yeah. you know that that's got a place in our society for a very very yeah, good yeah. reason um yeah. and yeah that actually that isn't the kind of person that i work with in my line of work at all because you know 
it's absolutely about staying in your lane and knowing who you can help and who needs an entirely different type of help. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely correct. And obviously, and you, you're aware of this and you know this. And I think, I guess I'll just like bring it up because I, I do think about that person yeah. quite a bit because it does it's really worry me. And there's yeah. nothing, there's nothing, unless that person really, truly wants to change. It is, yeah. it is like, oh, you want to bang yeah. your head against a, a wall. It's so frustrating. Um, I, I, I would say in a situation like that, hard though it may be, is to never stop loving them to, you know, it's to... Um, you know, in situations in my life where I've seen the utter destruction, you know, happen for and to and around a person, actually, to um, always know that they wouldn't have chosen to behave in that manner, they wouldn't have chosen to have created their life in the way that it's turning out in this precise moment. Um, But there was also nothing that I could do about helping to move them towards a moment of change that had to come entirely from them. Um, So knowing where you can be helpful to a person and in what way you know whether it is just literally being a bystander yeah. but a supportive and loving bystander is a useful thing yeah it's just hard the whole manipulate there's also a lot of other things going on for that person so it's mm. very very difficult to even be mm. um and i'd only really knew that person for a year as well so it's like you know when i say a friend it's like but it yeah. was yeah i tried and oh god different ways and but it's like you say it's really it's down to the person yeah. we have to make that decision um yeah. And so, so Sam, I want to ask you, uh, sort of like uh, the last question I want to ask you about the work that you do, like what's the best part about helping other women quitting drinking or reducing alcohol? What's the best part about it for you? Yeah, I I think for me, um, it's that opportunity to see other people in the place where I was. I very often, the kind of people who I'm working with are a little bit like me two or three years ago. And to be able to have that total belief in them that a change is entirely possible and doable. And not only that, but joyful and fun and happy on the other side. Um, The thing I that happens on a relatively regular occurrence is I'll be chatting to people and and I know that their moment isn't quite quite now or that they'll they'll say no actually it's okay I know I can do this by myself or it's okay I've decided I haven't got a problem with it or or whatever the thing is to have them come back a period of time later on and not that I want to see people in any kind of distress but to realize that you know, this thing that this change that we're trying to make for ourselves isn't as easy as we thought it was going to be. And then to have that opportunity to be somebody's champion and somebody's cheerleader, to be able to grow that relationship where then a lot of what I do, it it isn't purely about being a coach. Some of it is about mentoring. Some of it, some people sometimes just want the absolute answer in the formula. What did you do at this point? This is what I did. And um, a client really made me laugh this week. This week, the week before December, I've signed up more one-to-one clients into into my programs than I have at any other time. And it's because people are not holding, they're seeing it for what it is, deciding that they want something different. And a client said to me this week, oh, the thing is, what's really, really useful is you talk to me with, um, and and I know you've got love and you've got support and I know I can get help from you um, and that feels so good, but also you call me out when I'm being a dick. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Which is absolutely the thing. People need to just sometimes, you know, it's all very well, people doing all all that stuff, you know, you haven't got a problem, you know, you don't need to worry about it, all of that. Sometimes we just need to hear somebody call out yeah. when we are saying something oh. ridiculous or doing something ridiculous just stop it <laughs> absolutely i think it's the best gift i think sometimes sometimes it's hard to do it i think sometimes i think i've become more shy in doing it but my i love being able to be honest because i i actually really respect people who've been honest with me it's refreshing isn't it it's yeah. Not, yeah because it's like yeah. let's get to it quicker why are we wasting yes. time being nice and polite like this yeah. is not that's not kindness and, you know yeah and i think it's useful as well for all of those ways in which we try to justify our mm. alcohol consumption so you know 
whatever you know I'm not going to give you an example but whatever the thing is that that we're telling the stories that we keep in our head that are the things that we trot out as either justification or good reason or whatever I'm just going to tell you that that is absolute bollocks stop it because all you're doing is keeping that story further ingrained let's hang it out on the line let's pull it apart Let's take a good look at it and decide which bits of it we're going to cast aside and what story we're going to replace it with in the future that feels good. Yeah. No, I love it. This is brilliant. Thank you so much, Sarah. I I, I do want to say before I ask a finishing thoughts, like I do, I can say like from personal experience with you um, is that you have such a great energy. You have like this thing, like you definitely are people's champion. You're very encouraging. And that is like, it's a very, it, it, it's not a quality I come across a lot to have people who are genuinely have such an open heart as you, but you also, you're a go-getter, you have an open heart, you have such a great energy about you. And I feel like you just really spread um, this joy and innate motivation around you. And it's always really refreshing to have a chat with you. So um, mm-hmm. so I want to say that, because it's something that, it's not something that you see all the time. It's, it's, a, it's actually a rare quality. So I love that you have that about you, you know, and that's the part that you sort of like you've, kept and you've nur- you know nurtured it and not let life take it out of you mm-hmm. and I think that's it's a really laudable and um I, I really love that about you Sarah so you. I, <laughs> I'm gonna ask you the um I'm gonna ask you the finishing thoughts and I ask the same two questions to all my guests and the first one is this what do you wish you'd realized at 18 but realized like not just know something in your mind but actually mm-hmm. on a cellular level going okay I get it Mm-hmm. At 18, mm-hmm. I wish that I had realised I am not an extrovert. Um, and I used alcohol endlessly. I was first on the dance floor, last off the dance floor, the one to, you know, get the party started, the one to invite for the night out, the leader of the charge to the pub and then on to the nightclub, all of those things. And my friends and acquaintances absolutely would have described me as extrovert, always surrounded by other people, always in the middle of whatever was going on. I wish at 18 I had taken myself aside and gone, let's just have a little think about whether we are extrovert or not. Let's just see what makes you feel really good in life. And I was not confident then to have ever have admitted that what I really like is pyjamas and cups of tea (laughs) and time by myself. I really value time by myself now in a way Mm -hmm. that's taken me 20 years to to get round to um, Mm -hmm. and now I feel good about it. I'm not saying that it would have changed, you know, that it would have diverted the course of my life. I would still have wanted to have had all of those nights out and all of those fabulous memories and all that great fun stuff that I did. I just wish I'd have had an opportunity to have more carefully to consider it back then mm. Mm. yeah no 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 it's good it's hard to know yourself when you're that young yeah. as well yeah and so the second question is what stuff do you not put up with anymore yeah i i will not have that bullshit about not drinking being being miserable being a dull way of living i, I will not entertain i i used to be the dick who said um, you know, oh, I can't trust somebody who doesn't drink. I used to be the dick at the bar who, if somebody asked me for a Coke, I would have said, oh, I'm not buying you a Coke. What proper drink do you want instead? So it's karma that all of that stuff has come back to me. Um, I haven't got time for any of that because the way that I am living my life right now is about making a joyful choice not to drink. I am choosing this because it is a much better way of being for me. I do me, you do you, and I know what's good for me. So I will not have any of that historic stuff um, that I I, I just don't give it any headspace or airspace anymore. I like what's going on for me. No, I love that. And I think also like when you said about karma, I think I see it slightly there's also maybe a different way to look at it is that you understand you understand it from both sides now yes so yes. it helps you to maybe just know how to tackle it or how to receive it you know yes. what i mean 
So, you know, because it, it such... didn't mean that you were a bad person. It just meant no, that no, you no. were acting a certain way. And that's it, you know. And yeah. and absolutely what it is is part of a continuum. So I know for sure that friends of mine who, the co- where the conversation started off some time ago about why are you doing this, the com- with with not understanding it at all in the beginning part there's a spectrum to move through and now the conversation is shifting to and how are you doing it and why is it so good you know over time the reason why I was an idiot in previous bits of my life is because I did actually want a bit of what that other person was doing but I couldn't see that there was any bridge any way to get to it so for all of those times now when somebody would be saying to me you know I'm not ordering you the coke or whatever the thing is um I'm happy with that because I wonder if a little tiny seed has been planted in their head for some point in the future and I wish them nothing but goodness with that yeah, of course. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, I love that. I love that you said that. And so, Sarah, can you please tell us, like, where can people find you? How can they connect with you? How can they work with you? And also, do you do remote work? Yes, yes, I, I pretty much only do remote work, <laughs> which is lovely. Um, so I coach um, as a recovery coach, um, freelance for um, a charity. Um, I also do all my own private work. So my website is drinklesslivebetter.com, um, which is all one word, drinklesslivebetter.com. Um, I can be found there. I'm on all the social media platforms as Drink Less Live Better as well. Um, so I used to run group coaching programs, but actually now, and my focus for 2022 is one-to-one coaching. Um, and my program and packages that I'm doing at the moment are either a month long or three months long Um, and so within that package we I have contact with my clients one-to-one on zoom for an hour at a time um, and then daily accountability which is either via whatsapp or messenger whatever suits which is the gold dust for keeping people on the straight and narrow yeah oh yeah it's it's almost like you feel like you have someone like someone on retainer to help you yeah yes absolutely hotline yeah so okay but that's great that's really easy so it's drink less live better for the website and all social media thank you so much for today sarah this has been so lovely thank you for sharing all your insight and being so honest with me so i really appreciate it and um yeah hopefully i'll speak to you soon it's a pleasure and that's our episode i hope you enjoyed it please don't forget to rate review share it subscribe it on itunes follow it on spotify or whichever platform you listen from however you show love is how you can support this show drop me your questions or suggestions for future episodes via the website at angie-s.com or come and find me on instagram at tool for dish it podcast see you next week and until then using health inappropriately